This is the fifth video for MA1001. Today we'll be looking at graph sketching. So if we have a function f, uh, we want to try and draw a picture of what that function looks like in some sense. And so what we do is look at the, all, the, all the choices of, of points x and y uh, on the plane, the x, y plane, for which y is f of x. So we get a sequence of of points x. We can draw some dots, and then we're going to imagine that most often we then try and fill in a picture of what the function actually looks like. So let's try a simple example. If we try, um, so our example, y is x squared is our function. In other words, we could write that as y is f of x, where f of x is the function x squared, which associates to each number x, the number x squared. Um, so how do we draw such a picture? What we need to do is to pick some x values, and then for each one of them, figure out what's the corresponding y value, which is, of course, x squared. And so we'll draw, a, we'll pick a, a bunch of, of points, and it's not obvious how we how we could do that in general. There's no no simple rule, so we just have to give it a try. Let's okay, make some choices of points: 0, 0.5, 1, 1.4, 1 1.5, uh, 2, 2.5 and uh, 3, and then see what values come out on the other side. So 0 squared is 0 times 0 is 0. 0. 0.5 times 0. 0.5 is 0. 0.25. 1 times 1 is 1. 1. 1.5 times 1.5 is 2.25. This is how we square these things. So we take each of these x inputs and we produce the corresponding y output by taking this guy and count that's x and counting x squared. In other words, squaring that number to produce that number. So 1.5 squared. Now there's 1.5 times 1.5 is 2.5. 2 squared is 4. 2.5 squared is 6.25. And 3 squared is 9. Those are some, some numbers we could try. We could have tried other ones. It doesn't have to be these, but just gives us a few uh, numbers to try and see what it looks like. And then we try and come up with a picture based on that. So we need some x-axis, we'll plug in the various x-values, and some y-axis. So we'll have to come up with some kind of idea of what this is going to look like. So the highest values we need are around 9. So if we make this be, let's say, 10, so that'll be 5. And so here's about 2, 3, 1, 4. And so we've got some values to start with, and we can start drawing some, some values on the x-axis. We're going to have something like 1, 2, 3, and we need uh, 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5. Um, so this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. And so now we can draw the picture. Um, we've got 0, 0, and that's here. And then we've got 0 0.5, 0 0.25 which is, if that's 1, it's somewhere over here, very small, very close to the axis, then 1, 1. Note that the y values and the x values are on different scales. This is 1 in the y, and this is 1 in the x. They're different sizes. They don't have to be the same size. Um, so then we've got um, 1 and a half goes to 2.25, so that's somewhere around... That's 3, that's 2, 2.25, somewhere around here maybe. I'm not trying to be very accurate. It doesn't matter a great deal just to get a sense of what we're doing. 2 goes to 4, and then uh, 3, of course, goes all the way to 9, which is some way up here. And then 2.5 goes to 6.5, so 5, so 6.5, somewhere, like, sorry, 6.25, somewhere around there. And, uh, and we get some idea of what it looks like. Now, of course, it doesn't tell us what, for sure what it looks like. We don't really know that it doesn't go wiggling all over the place in between these dots, but we might guess that it would somehow smoothly join up the dots in a reasonable way. We'll worry later about how to deal with that problem. How do we figure out that it doesn't wiggle up and down in the middle in between the dots we've drawn? That's a problem we have to face. But anyway, so that's that's part of the picture. And then the other half of the picture comes from the fact that this function is what's called, what's called an even function. That means that f at minus x is the same as f at x. In other words, the picture looks perfectly symmetrical around this line, flipped around this line this way to that, and so it's going to look the same this side as it looked on that side. 
giving us a picture something like this. And it gives an idea of what the what the function looks like. We're never interested in being very precise with these things. Of course, we could always get some software to draw it for us, something like that. But if we want to draw it by hand, it's fine if it's fairly rough, as long as it gives us a right rough, rough intuition about what's, what's happening with the function. This, of course, is dangerous. Um, we could have an example where, it, where this approach doesn't work. Uh, we could be messed up by uh, by not picking enough points, not seeing, you know, what's really going on. As an example, take the function f of x is, um, let's say, x cubed minus 3x squared minus 9x plus 18. Quite a messy thing to calculate with by hand. And then g of x is um, minus 11x plus 18. And then if you check certain values, this you just happen to pick the values that say x, and then we'll find what is f of x. And then on the same table we can write down values for what is g of x. If we plug in x is 0, 1, 2, then what we find, and it's a bit messy to work out, I'm not going to do it, you could plug it in and see, you turn out, it turns out that when you plug in 0 you get 18 here, but also get 18 here. You plug in 1, you get 7 here, and also you get 7 here. Plug in 2, x is 2, and you get minus 4 here and minus 4 here. So, um, not obvious, but these functions take exactly the same values at these these three points. So are they the same everywhere else? Well, no. Um, if you actually draw very carefully what the graphs are, well, I can't draw them very carefully by hand, but they do something like, um, you go up to 18, down to, further down to 7, and then down to minus 4, and so they look like well, one of, oh, sorry, minus four, so it should be more or less like a straight line, something like this. Um, that's what that's actually what g really looks like. That's g of x. But f looks something quite different. f has a much more complicated picture going on. It looks something like this, um, and manages to go off like that. So this is f. And that's not obvious. From the from the information we have here, we couldn't tell these two functions apart. F and G look exactly the same as far as these numbers are concerned. We plug in these x's. So we get a misleading notion that they look that they might look the same, when actually they look very different if you really draw them out carefully. So we have to worry about this problem. Uh, that's a problem we won't worry about at the moment, but we will eventually worry about this problem. We'll be able to use to use calculus to tell that this function f, for example, uh, has, uh, has goes down for a while and then starts going up again, whereas g keeps going down forever. And so we'll be able to tell that they're very different. But what's clear is that there's some notion that we need to figure out what, what would be wise values of x to pick. We can't, we, don't, we can't just pick any old x's. We really want to pick values of x that somehow tell us what's really going on with the function. And that's the, that's the real problem that we're facing at the moment and that we don't have a solution for and we won't have until we've developed some calculus. So the simpler equations, as we saw in that, uh, that example for the g of x, the simplest equations are, are the linear equations, equations of lines. So what we want to do is to think about um, what do they look like and how do we, how do the, how does the algebra relate to the geometry? There's a line, and that line has these two points on it. And of course, once you specify two points, you, determine, you can determine the line that, that passes between them. So, uh, so it's enough to have um, uh, to, to to specify any two points, and you can work out an equation of a line between them. And you can see that should be right if you put a point there and a point there. You can just draw the line between them. And uh, similarly, if you specify a point and you specify a, um, a, a steepness or slope of the line that you want to have then there's going to be one line that's that, that has that slope. Um, so we've got to make that more precise. Um, we can say that, um, well, we'll let, I'll let you worry about how to find the line between the two points. But for the, the one with the given slope, um, we can say the equation of the line should be given by computing out um, if we had, uh, well, first of all, what, how do we find slope? If we were given the line, we'd find the slope between the, the slope of this line by taking two points on the line, say x1, y1, and x2, y2, and saying, well, how quickly does the thing go up? If we go out this much in the x, it goes up this much in the y. And so uh, it's to be the ratio, the slope, which is usually done with the letter m, is the ratio of how much it goes up, the difference in the y's, 
this y is where it starts, this is where it ends. And so the difference in the y's is how high up it goes from where it starts to where it ends up. The y where it starts, the y where it ends up. Um, divided by how far out it goes, the x where it starts and the x where it finishes. This here is the difference in the x's, and that'll be our slope. And that's how we'll calculate uh, slope. And in particular, if that's positive, it's going up. Um, right, slope is positive, it goes up. If slope is negative, it goes down. Um, so we get some idea of what we're talking about. Now, of course, we we want to then say, what is the, the line with a given slope through a given point? And that'll be how we'll get an equation for the line. Um, well, if we wanted to find a line with a given slope through a given point, if we had, say, some point x1, y1, and we wanted the slope uh, to be some given value m, which is given to us, we'd say that every point on the line x, y, has to have has to be a point for which the slope coming from this point x1 y1 has to be m so m has to be y minus y1 over x minus x1 and if you just uh, do a little bit of algebra to solve that you get y equals y1 plus m x minus x1 so you get an equation for the line you can calculate out this line um, based on that information so it gives you how a, a way to find the equation of the line given the slope and one point on the line. Okay, so uh, we can see that, um, on the other hand, if we had a line given to us, given line uh, y equals, say, some line of, the, of, of some form mx plus b, because you could expand this into, of course, we could take this number here, multiply it by m, and push it over here, and we get something that looks like that, m x plus b, which is a standard form of a line. Um, any point um, x2, y2, say, with, uh, well, lying above, let's say, above the line, has too much y to lie on the line. Its y is too large, and so y2 is bigger than m x2 plus b. And uh, and similarly, if it lies below the line, it would have that be smaller instead of bigger. Um, now, there's one kind of line that doesn't have this form. This, this is the form of a line, so y equals mx plus b, and that's a line with slope m. And um, which is some some finite value of, of slope, measuring how fast it goes up, or uh, if it's negative, it goes down. Um, but there are lines that don't have that kind of form because they don't go sliding along at some at some slope going up or down. There are lines that go straight up and down, right? Vertical lines. And for a vertical line, this doesn't make any sense. This this kind of equation doesn't make sense because this would say that we'd be tracing out by cha by changing the value of x, we'd be moving along the line with the corresponding point y. But this guy, all the x's are the same, so it doesn't have that form. It has a different form. It's the only type of line that doesn't have this form. It has the form x is some constant x naught. We can always write the vertical lines like that. Okay, so those, that's pretty much what we need to know about equations of lines for the moment. Uh, thinking in terms of slopes and how to find the line given slope through a given point. I'll uh, leave you to find the line between two given points. Um, we have to think about circles because we'll need them as well. Um, we think about circles. A circle is always going to be consisting of there's some point, which is a center point. And then there's the points of the circle. This is the circle here. The center is not part of the circle. The circle is just this round thing here, these points here. And how do I find those points? Well, there's some distance, which is the radius r. r is our usual symbol for radius. The circle, this point here is the center. That's the center of the circle. And um, so we'll give it some... Um, some uh, name like x1, y1, or something like that, x1, y1. And then the equation of the circle. Um, it just says that every point of the circle, I should say every point of the circle, 
um, has distance. Distance r, there it is, the distance r, the points of the circle are distance r from the center. And if conversely from the center, and conversely anything of distance r from the center lies on the circle. And so we need to write that down. And so what we what we remember is the Pythagorean theorem that we measure distance by measuring the change in the x variable squared plus the change in the y variable squared and then the square root of that. And that should be r. So this is the equation of the circle. So that's one way to write it. Um, it's in this sentence here. Another way to write it is this equation here. It's often written somewhat differently or if we square both sides, it gives us the same information, but it doesn't involve a nasty square root symbol. Square roots are a bit scary. So um, so we'll write it like that. Either of those says the same thing, that the distance of the point x, y from the point x, 1, y, when the distance of the point of the circle from, from the center of the circle is r. And so that's the equation of the circle.